I'm JJ, and tonight we're going to take a look at GPG 18. I'm the man on the street, Bob Maloney, and tonight we got the blood, the guts, the glory, and the inside story. The MMA and Sports Extreme show starts right now. MMA and Sports Extreme Show. I'm JJ with my guy on the street, Bob Maloney. How's it going, Bob? Excellent, JJ. Great to be here again tonight. Fantastic. GPG 18, Fighters Against Spouse Abuse. The crowd came out in an amazing snowstorm to show the support for another great GPG fight. You know, the weather forecasters call for one to three inches, James. i got to be honest with you. It was more like six to eight. We had the snowplow going while people were pulling in the driveway. We were salting, and it was... Tremendous turnout for a snowstorm leading into a really good night. Once again, Global Proving Ground reaches out into the community, makes sure that we have a, an important cause so that these fighters that step into the cage can make an impact uh, right in the, in the local area. And this event with fighters against uh, spouse abuse, it's uh, something that's big in the, in the media and it's something that hits home for a lot of people. So we, we had a great event in a, in a horrible snowstorm and represented very well. It is a really great cause, James. One worth fighting for. I agree, and, and to see the amount of fans coming out in that snowstorm, uh, to be honest, which I'm always honest, is that uh, seeing that snow coming down, I didn't think many people were gonna come out, and as a promoter, that's terrifying, but to see the support and the, the almost packed house that we had at the event center for, for the third event in a row, uh, it feels good. It feels good that we're getting the traction in the snow, we'll say. I said that night that everybody in the building was a fighter against Mother Nature to make it in in that <laughs> snowstorm, and we had a house full of fighters for sure. We sure did. We had great fights. Looking forward to, you know, really be able to come back and, and cover all these fights in the next segment. And uh, one of the things that we want to keep an eye on is, is that these, the, our matchmakers did a great job. So when we come back, we're going to check out GPG 18. Now a word from our sponsors and they are there to support us. We'll be right back. Batteries Plus bulbs keep stacks of batteries for cars, cell phones, watches, plus light bulbs for lamps, can lights, and appliances right on hand. Did I mention we also repair smartphones? Batteries Plus bulbs, trust the plus. Visit Batteries Plus bulbs today. Extreme show. GPG 18, great fights. What did you think, Bob? Well, James, a few of the highlights I'd like to start out with was Dameron Kirby versus Stefan Ewens, James. And when you talk knockouts, that's a fight you want to talk about. Dameron Kirby, who I believe is under contract and coming back again to fight for GPG, came out and just laid the wood to Stefan Ewens, who was a veteran, who was a very tough guy at a UFC gym. I was surprised it was a really good matchup, but Dameron Kirby just laid the wood, overhand crossed. Knocked him out early on in the first round. That was the first night, first fight of the night, and we got started rocking and rolling right away. It's interesting. If you go to a live mixed martial arts fight and you, and you see a knockout like that, the, the fans uh, actually immediately get connected with that fighter. And if you were hanging out at the fights, you actually see that they pulled uh, Mr. Kirby up into the VIP area, and they were buying him uh, beverages all evening. And it was, a, it was a great, great fight. So we want to check out that highlight. It's quick. Don't blink. 
My name's Stefan Jose Ewens. Fight out of UFC Jim Turnersville. Submission. Armbar. That's just what I see. Because I'm 99.9% .9 sure that I'm going to win. Now I'm just praying for both of us. I just wish everybody love. His opponent, Steph Stefford uh, Ewens, also, uh, you know, his last fight was a loss to Chris Pintado in XFE 39. Uh, so he's equally as hungry, um, you know? And, uh, you know, like, like you said, just because uh, Dameron's fight's all unanimous decision doesn't mean that they weren't close fights, you know? Uh, it is on a 10-point must system. Uh, so, you know, th all that means is that his opponent, you know, had the slighter bit of an edge, but he wasn't finished. He wasn't KO'd, he wasn't TKO'd, he wasn't submitted. So, you know, we have to see what happens here in this fight. Um, Dan Ron Kirby um, from the Washington, D.C. area, fighting out of a ball of academy. He's a formidable opponent. I've seen some of his tape. Uh, he, he looks good. It'll be a war. We're going to uh, have a good time, uh, you know, going to war. I'm a force to be reckoned with, and uh, I honestly don't, don't plan on taking this past the first round. I'm ready to go as soon as I go, because no one uh, has outworked me. Uh, I've worked harder than I can, I can imagine anyone working. Shout out to Evolve Academy, all my family, friends, and sponsors. Um, I'm putting this one on, on your back. Wow, that's a pretty impressive uh, resume you got. All right, we're going to be taking it up right now. Our first fight of the night here at Global Proving Ground. 18, Dameron Kirby versus Stefan Uwens. We're going to be taking it up to our ring announcer, Steve Peacock. First up is a 27-year-old fighter who trains with UFC Jim Turnersville here in New Jersey and currently has an 0-1 pro MMA record. Standing at 5'11 and weighing 174 pounds in the blue corner, Stefan Ewan! Facing Ewins is a 33-year-old fighter from Gaithersburg, Maryland, representing Evolve Academy. Desires to add a victory to his 0-3 pro MMA record. In the red corner, Dameron Bruiser Kirby! We're getting started here with our first fight of the night. Once again, Dameron Kirby versus Stefan Owens, the 185-pound division. Stefan came in quite a bit underweight, 174. All right, three five-minute rounds of mixed martial arts, and they touch gloves, respect. Stefan starts with a leg kick, trying to get his distance. Hands up, that's not smart. You want you always want to protect your head. And there we go. And he paid the price. He paid the price. Wow. What did I say? Holy cow. You called that one. You called that one. That's crazy. You don't put your hands up like that. No, you don't. Wow. That that might have been under 10 seconds. I think we might have a record here in terms of knockout. And he, he is still out. Well, like we were talking about before, you don't want to put it in the hands of the judges. And he made sure not only was it not put in the hands of the judges, it sure as heck was not going to be put in the hands of his opponent. There right. he goes, hands up. Hands up, nice and overhand clocked. right hand. He even kept his chin up slightly. He was turning his head, and uh, he had nowhere to go but down. Up against the cage, referee comes in, sees there was no, no need for any unnecessary damage. Very nice technique as well from him, he, from um, Stefan. He was coming in, stepping forward as he was throwing the overhand right, to pivoting his hips as well. Dameron, and D Dameron actually, he threw an extra punch there. Wasn't, I don't think it was needed at the end. He, I mean, he was out. You're right, but sometimes in the, in the yeah, heat of the moment. You don't know. You don't know for sure. You don't know until the ref. Until the ref comes in. This bout is stopped at 21 seconds of the first round. The winner by knockout in the red corner, Dameron Kirby. Most fight fans will tell you they like the knockouts. A lot of fight fans will complain when you see the, the guys rolling around and grappling, maybe not doing a lot of activity on the ground. But this fight was exactly what people like, which is a, you know, a, a hard overhand right knockout. What a way to start the night. You couldn't have started with a louder bang. That's all I could say about the first fight. Entertainment, GPG always brings it. This next fight, Hoban, Gamble, what are your thoughts on that? Well, James, both of these guys are big guys, 210 pounds, both in shape, and I knew we were in for a really good fight, and you've seen some good transition in this fight from both fighters, and next thing you know, we had another quick ending to that fight. 
Well, we're not going to give it away. We're going to go to the highlight, but pay attention. Pay close attention to how this one ends. Uh, Charles C. No Gamble out of uh, Baltimore, Maryland, fight out of Baltimore Martial Arts Academy. I know he's, he's young, and I know he's hungry. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Just my experience. I think I've got more experience than him. Um, so if times get tough, I know I can pull from that experience. I would love to finish this fight either way, uh, knock out some missions, TKO, you know. But the biggest thing is just get that win, baby. Thanks for the support, guys. I want to come back home with the win, then we can party, get a couple beers, have a good time. Alex Hoobman, fight out of Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. Uh, parabolic performance and rehab in Miller Brothers MMA. Whatever I want to do, do what I feel like. Beat the shit out of this guy, because I'm better. Thank you everyone who, who did come out and uh, make it a great fight. Won't be disappointed. He is entering the cage, heading on over to his side of the cage. And once again, this is the 210 pounds, Alec Hoobin versus Charles Gamble. We're going to be turning it over to our man in the cage, Steve Peacock. Representing Baltimore Martial Arts Academy, he's aiming to win and thereby balance out his one and two pro MMA record. This six foot three, 200 and a, and a half, 208 and a half pound fighter in the blue corner. Charles C. No Gamble! <laughs> Our next fighter is a 22-year-old from Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, with a one-and-one one record who trains with Miller Brothers MMA, Precision MMA, standing at six foot one and weighing 207 pounds. This U.S. Marine in the red corner is Alec Hoobin! Hoobin, the Marine Corps vet, wearing camo. Coming out touching gloves, then going in fast. Knees to the body. Ooh, oh, nice! Knees nice. to the head. Coming over the top, then with the left elbow. Gamble has him up against the cage. Gamble had a return of an elbow of his own. Hoobin throwing knees, decent knees here. Now Hoobin has him up against the cage. Nice little bit of reversal. Been a little bit of a calf kick there from Hoobin. Nice side knee to the thigh of Gamble. Got underhooks. This round is set for five minutes. Three five minute rounds. A little bit of a little bit of blood there on the uh, head of Hoobin. Going for a single leg pick here. Nice. He gets full guard. Just a minute into the round here. Hoobin working for submission there. He tap. Wow. Another early fight. Holy cow. Looked like almost a combination between a key lock and an Uma Plata over there. Couldn't really see what it was from this angle. We'll have to wait for the replay. Our Marines coming in, doing solid work. Great submission victory against, again, a, a Lloyd Irvin fighter. And Lloyd Irvin is known for having great submission artists. You know, it's very possible that knee to the head kind of maybe disoriented, gambled a little bit. All right, we're going to be having our replay here. Global Proving Ground replay. Nice, beautiful knee, left knee to the switch Square left to the knee. face. Square to the face, I think that's what opened up his nose. He here. started off in a full guard, reversed it into a side, going for a full key lock, almost reverse key lock there in a, in a, in on the ground position. I, I don't think I've actually ever seen it done like that. Beautiful victory for our Marine, Alec Hoobin. This foul is stopped at one minute and 11 seconds of the first round. The winner by submission by way of Kimura came out of the red corner, Alex Hoobin. If you were paying attention, that's one of the hardest moves to pull off in professional mixed martial arts, a Kimura from the bottom. Beautiful transition from Alec Hoobin. Really, a, a, he should be proud of himself. I'm sure he was smiling the whole night. 
couldn't wait to get to the gym and tell his guys and, and then see them on TV as well. Fantastic submission, one that you don't see very often. Yeah, I heard a lot of uh, talking amongst the coaches and fans in the crowd at GPG 18 that uh, they, it was worth the price of admission right there. Yes, and that was an upset too because speaking with our matchmaker beforehand, she had thought that going into that fight that Charles Gamble had an edge and Alec came out and, you know, with that beautiful tr we, submission. We've had some surprises. Uh, what looks really good on paper sometimes ends up that it's just not the right night for that guy. And, and we're going to go to a, another fight, which is one of the new fan favorites of Global Proving Ground. We have uh, Peter Pettis, and, uh, who we got him fighting against. Peter Pettis and Br Branding Pennington. And, and Peter Pettis is a name, folks, that you really should learn. This guy trains with some, one of my good friends up there at Lloyd Irvin's MMA, John Del Bruce, a devastator. He trains with really top shelf fighters. He's 2-0 and now. He's exciting. He has flair. He comes to the cage with style. And he gets victories. Yeah, if you're a fan of Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee movies, you're going to like Peter because he has uh, a lot of those kind of movements that uh, Bruce Lee would have in, a, in an MMA fight. <laughs> and if uh, a lot of people don't know that, but Bruce Lee actually was the first mixed martial artist. <laughs> So that's pretty uh, pretty impressive. Um, Peter's now 2-0 and in the, in the GPG cage. He's coming back again for GPG 19, which we'll cover later on. I'm looking forward to it. He's definitely a star on the rise, a name that you definitely want to write down and not forget. So let's go to that fight right now. Check out the highlights. My name's Peter, the Joker Petties. I'm um, fighting out of Elk Ridge, Maryland, by way of Crazy 88, Team Whatever. Um, I like to have fun in a cage. Uh, every time I go in there, I'm looking to embarrass my opponent and have as much fun while inflicting as much damage as possible. Strength in my fight game is just I'm comfortable wherever it goes. I'm comfortable standing on my feet as well as on the ground. I um, feel like I can dictate the pace as well as I can take the ground, fight to the ground whenever I want it to. I don't think he trains as hard as I do. Uh, train in the mornings and nights, I've been doing it for years now. Um, conditioning, wrestling, striking, pure striking, Muay Thai. I just don't think he puts in the hours and it's gonna show to me. Here we are, our first fighter coming to us by way of the cage in Peter Pettis. He's always got a smile on his face, just like the last time I saw him. He's one of those guys that loves the sport. My name is Brandon Pennington. Uh, I'm from Hybrid Training Center uh, outside of Virginia Beach, Virginia. I started cleaning gyms when I was young. Uh, I've been fighting since I was 16 years old. I didn't have money uh, to train, so uh, pretty much whatever uh, the coach that I had at the time offered me a, a cleaning position at the gym, I took it. Uh, Queen of Gym, and I trained six days a week, every week, and uh, loved every second of it. But I'm telling you right now, I'm, I've been through smoke and I've been through fire before, and this is going to be no different. Well, all I can say is, guys, is, uh, you're, you're going to see the best fight of the night. There's going to be fireworks. You're going to see two fast, lightweights go at it. Uh, no doubt it's going to be the best fight of the night. I'm going to take it to them, though, and best believe I'm going to come out the victor. We got Peter Pettis versus Brandon Pennington. Pettis at 155-59 with a perfect pro record of 1-0. Brandon with his amateur record of 13-2, making his pro debut here tonight at Global Proving Ground 18. Next up is a 24-year-old New Jersey-born fighter from Columbia, Maryland, who trains with Crazy 88, Team Lloyd Irvin. In his reprise pro MMA appearance, this 5'10", 154 and a half pound softball is looking to preserve his 1-0 winning record or add to his winning record, which some of you may remember he achieved right here in a stunning victory at GPG 16. In the blue corner, Pete the Joker Petty. Appearing in his pro MMA debut and coming here with a 14 and 2 amateur record. This 21 year old mixed martial artist from Virginia Beach has been getting prepared with Hybrid Training Center. Standing at 5 foot 10 and 156 pounds in the red corner, Brandon the Janitor Pennington. Once again, Brandon Pennington versus Peter Pettis for 155-pound 
division here at Global Proving Ground 18, and we are ready to rock and roll. Three five-minute rounds of mixed martial arts action. And here we go. Pettis looks huh? super relaxed. He does. No touching of the gloves from either of our fighters here. Pennington coming out with a nice right kick to the body. Pettis steps back. Interesting little stance he's got here right now. Going to be bouncing back and forth. That generally is a sign of, aside from back being a little bit cocky, just has a tendency to say that he has no respect for what he, he thinks Brandon Pennington might be bringing to the cage here tonight. You know, we saw that in the first fight. That was a mistake, 21-second Abs knockout. Absolutely, and you called that. So let's hope that, uh, you know, Pettis is not making the same mistake here. But aside from a little bit of show, buddy, there he goes. He throws his first little shot. No connection. Pennington returns with a, a jab and a right. Pettis is kind of taunting him. He really is. He's taunting him. The question is, is he cutting off the cage? Brandon doesn't look any worse for the wear, obviously, right at the moment. He seems to be handling himself pretty well. Nice shot to the body. Pettis. Now, of course, also, you know, finding a southpaw is kind of difficult. And right now, Brandon is actually turning into his stronger side right now. Pettis is smiling, saying, bring it on, Brandon. Ooh, body Great kick there. Body shot. Wow. Pennington catches it, though. Yeah. A lot of times, people think that the excitement of the slap, but the slapping shot, you know, doesn't hurt as much as the deep thud. So it, though it sounded nice across the, the, the hall here, not necessarily very painful. Pennington Brandon pushes him up against the cage right here in front of us. Nice break from Pettis. Ooh, goes over the top. Little hits to the, to the wrist of Pennington. Brandon's mouth's a little bit open. Yeah, Pettis has a very unique stance. I'm not sure I've ever seen this before. He does it. Nice leg check by Pennington. Good footwork from Pettis. He is not allowing Brandon to come in and execute any of his game plan right now. Nice catch. Good right hook by Pettis, released by Pennington. It's almost like a crane kick there. Reminiscent of Karate Kid. There you go. I mean, he's got that interesting, uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll see a Dwayne Ludwig. Oh, there he goes, takes him down. Pettis has his back now, slam it. Well, Pennington catches it. Very nice balance work, preventing the takedown from Pennington, control, looking to control the wrist. Nice attempt knee there. Releases, back in the center of the cage here. Brandon's got to execute, nice body kick. Ooh, nice return, one, two against both of each other. Pettis is saying, come on, bring it to me, man. You know, usually when a guy says that, it's almost like trying to tell your opponent, it didn't hurt me, but it really did. Absolutely, especially if you see a shake of the head. <laughs> That's such a common, common uh, play. Switch left kick. Oh, big head kick there. And a little connection, didn't seem to be bothering Brandon too much there. Reminiscent of Mirko Krokop. Absolutely. Was it right leg hospital, left kick cemetery? <laughs> there you go. Both smiling at each other. We've got a minute and 28 seconds here in the first round. So far, we've had more action than we had our first two fights put together. Let's see what these two will bring to us as we go to the second round. Again, Ted is saying, bring it. Yeah, Pettis is saying, hey, this is nothing I haven't seen. Your 14 and 2 record doesn't do anything for me. Brandon's really got to start executing some strength here if he's going to get the respect of Pettis. One more minute of action. We're down to our final minute here. Oh, here we go. Slip. Pennington's got him up against the cage. Brandon's got to go for a takedown. <laughs> Referee Gasper Oliver backs up out of the way there. Pennington is starting to pick up some of those leg kicks. Really finding a home with that body shot, that left body kick. Brandon's got to keep his hands up a little bit higher and his elbows in a little bit tighter. Again, fighting a southpaw is, is pretty difficult especially when you're fighting into the man's strength. 
which is what Brandon's actually doing. Shoots for a takedown, and he uh, gets it. Gets it. Seconds. Hold on, it's less than 10 seconds here. All right, very good first round, a lot of action, nice back and forth. No determinant winner of that round. I think the action, I think a little bit more busyness from Brandon, but I think the more effective punching and kicking came from Pettis. Yeah, especially with that takedown at the end. Absolutely. Pennington looks like he's breathing a bit hard. Here we go with the replay, overhand. Neither right. really connected there. He did not, but his punches were looking clean and crisp. He did it. He looked like he went for the trap of that left kick to the body. Head kick. That was impressive. It was very nice. Not a lot of connection. He had a little bit more of a defense on that one, bringing his head or his hands closer to his head to protect him from. Because a lot of times, a lot of guys think I'm going to put my hands out farther. A lot of times, you can actually hurt yourself getting kicked in the arm, and then you you know whacking yourself. You definitely the better defense against a, a high kick is actually putting your hands up against your head. All right, here we go into round two. Waiting for our referee. And action. Once again, we got a five minute round here, round two. The Global Proving Ground 18, Victorian Four, spousal, fighters against spousal abuse. Pettis is pointing at something. Tell him, like, he's telling him, kick me. There you go, I think Brandon's finally starting to get mad. Oh! Wow, that was some heavy ground and pound. A hard shot taking Brandon to the ground. He's got to control, he's got to get some control of his position. Oh man, wow. A TKO stoppage through the strikes. Second round, winner, Peter Pettis. Very impressive win there for Pettis. It is an impressive win. Obviously a disappointing look in uh, Brandon Pennington's eyes. Peter Pettis doing a great job. He never, ever allowed Brandon to get his groove on to allow any of the real striking that Brandon and his ground game, which Brandon Pennington actually has an, ex an impressive ground game. And uh, Pettis just said, absolutely not. I'm not going to let you come to the ground. And here we go. We're going to be having our replay here. Brandon had his uh, right hand a little low, left hand low. Pettis comes in with a nice right hook, drops Brandon to the ground. Coming in again, once again, Brandon was throwing, looking for that kick, and nice counter. I mean, he actually, a lot of times a good counter can beat the initial punch and or kick, which we just proved here with Peter Pettis. And uh, nonstop ground and pound. He never allowed Brandon to uh, get any action with his ground game. And we're going to go up to the ring announcer for the decision. This bout is stopped at 39 seconds into the second round. The winner by referee stoppage and TKO due to striking came out of the blue corner, Peter Petty. Once again, Peter Petty's fantastic win, 2-0 and in the GPG cage. We're bringing him back for GPG 19. What are your thoughts? I love the kid. I can't wait to see him fight again. As an MMA fan, he's the kind of guy that you go buy a ticket to come and see. He brings a flair to the cage, a confidence. He works hard. He trains hard. Peter Petty's, remember the name. He's, gonna, he's going places. He's a star on the rise. With the consistent fights we're having at GPG Event Center, uh, fans can find their favorite fighters, and he's really building a fan base. When we come back from this commercial, we have a fight that is fantastic. But right now, a word from our sponsors. Batteries Plus bulbs keep stacks of batteries for cars, cell phones, watches, plus light bulbs for lamps, can lights, and appliances right on hand. Did I mention we also repair smartphones? Batteries Plus bulbs. Trust the plus. Visit Batteries Plus bulbs today. Are you driving anonymously? I'm Jeff Tudor, owner and creative director of Arizona Designs. With one of our custom wraps, our design team will bring your idea to life. 
Then you'll be advertising your company 24 hours a day, whether you're driving or not. The end result is a memorable advertisement message that allows you to stand out from the competition in any industry. Our vehicle wraps are vibrant and durable and will capture 80,000 impressions a week. Whether your vehicle is leased or purchased, the protective wrap is removable before you change vehicles. Usually, we can design, print, and install your wrap in under a week. So call us at 800-600-1412 to set up the next step in growing your business. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Welcome back. MMA and Sports Extreme Show is rocking it out. Great fight. What are we up next? Brandon Wheeler versus Anthony Dill. Brandon making his debut. Anthony Dill 0-1 out of Martinez BJJ. Two, le two lethal grapplers. Yeah, which is interesting because right in the very beginning of the fight, Dill landed a, uh, a punch really hard and rocked Brandon Wheeler. But Brandon Wheeler being trained right by his coach, he got in really low and deep to make sure he can get his, his uh, wits back about him. Because uh, he almost lost the fight very early on. And he, uh, he did a takedown, got um, Dill up against the cage, and he actually rested in there. He got in tight and he rested. Then eventually, he, uh, he, you know, it's a great fight. So we're going to go to the highlights, check it out, and uh, enjoy. Next up is a 23-year-old from the state of Maryland who trains with the Hagerstown BJJ Academy. With an 0-2 pro MMA record, this 5'8", 133-pound fighter is hungry for a win. In the blue corner, Brandon Wheeler. <laughs> Competing against Wheeler will be a 19-year-old. From Philadelphia, who's looking to balance the scales of his 0-1 professional MMA record. Standing at 5'9 and weighing 136 pounds, this fighter represents Martinez BJJ of Philly. In the red corner, Anthony Bang Bang Dill! Once again, this is three five-minute rounds of mixed martial arts action. Our main event here at Global Proving Ground 18. Brandon Wheeler versus Anthony Dill. And this is in the bantamweight division. Bantamweight, bantamweight. Who comes up with the same thing? Adam Adam. Oh, the Southpaws and I are doing a great job. Nice uppercut. Fast to his action. Come on with a right round kick. Wheeler survives that initial onslaught. Goes for that takedown. Decent sprawl, but then he goes into uh, looking for a guillotine, but he's gonna he's losing it. From Wheeler being in a relative uh, mount, modified mount of position, keeping his legs down, doing a little bit of a wall walk, trying to get back up on his feet. Is Dill still looking for that guillotine choke? That loses it. And when he gets up, he's gonna want to strike. He, he had success there. I think he's gonna go back to that. Absolutely. Nice reversals from both these gentlemen here. So reversals up against the cage. Going knee to the thighs. This is actually good for Wheeler. He gets to recover a little bit from all those punches he took Absolutely. early on. He took a very first, the first shot was a pretty hard shot. Light punch in. Oh, nice takedown by Dill. A little bit of blood. Right, I'm assuming that's coming from the eye of Wheeler from that initial onslaught. Went from to a side mount. Looking to go knee ride over to try and get a full mount. Good bottom work from Oh, he's working Wheeler. a triangle. Looking to, he was we learned he needs to keep pushing off that cage and get on top. Back in a side mount position. Wheeler's doing a good a job. Wheeler's doing a really good job from the bottom. Goes into a full guard position. Feet on the hips. Throwing some elbows from the bottom. 
controlling the right arm of Dill. A good resting position as well. Doing a high guard now. Trying to compress Dill's shoulders, keeping him from implementing any type of ground and pound. Good work by Wheeler, good jiu-jitsu. Nice control of the wrist, elbow to the top. And this is this is where that hair becomes a factor. You see, you see, Dill keeps swinging it out of his face. It keeps getting in front of his eyes. You can't see what's going on. Absolutely, it's like the old days when uh, Uriah Faber still had that long hair. Eventually realized it was time to cut it. Depending on the outcome of this fight, we may see that as well. Once again, nice recovery period. Doing a good job from the bottom. Is Wheeler against Dill? Who had some great success. Nice elbows from the ground here. Okay, for a second, it looked like he was trying to pull that leg, maybe looking for a Google plot or something. Goes back to a lower guard. Minute and a half left in the action. Wheeler just wiped his eye, maybe pulling blood out of his eye. He's trying to get some body shots, trying to soften up the body. The rib cage of Wheeler. Wheeler's still doing a good job, looking for a submission. And he's got Going it. Going for a full triangle. Wow, he snuck that in quickly. If he can get that leg over, wrap it over even more, it's gonna get it tighter. He's the actor, he dropped himself into it. Trying to go for an armbar into the triangle. Nice, he gets it, has it under his chin and shoulder blade. Nice work by Wheeler. Almost a double submission attempt. Dill is still, oh, and he's tapping. Wow, great jujitsu. Incredible recovery from Wheeler on that initial onslaught. Comes away with a beautiful submission victory. So there we go, four fights, four finishes. Holy cow. We had some fast and furious action all here. Three fights finishing in the first round here tonight at the Global Proving Ground. 18 fighters against spousal abuse. Still looks very calm as well. You know, from this interview to his walk-in and to his victory, Wheeler's a very uh, calm, cool, and collected kind of guy in there. Mad respect from both of our fighters, of course. And he hung on there early, you know, early on. He, Dill was giving him some, some trouble with those punches and hung on and ends up winning with the triangle. Did a great job. He sunk in that triangle very fast. Uh, Dill was doing a decent job trying to avoid the submission, going from side to side. He should have taken a little bit more time to throw his leg over and sit back and kind of let the release go of the triangle, but he didn't. Wheeler comes away with a beautiful victory. This bout is stopped at four minutes and 20 seconds of the first round. The winner by submission, by way of triangle, came out of the blue corner, Brandon Wheeler. I think it was an upset. Anthony Dill was the favorite again. I, I agree with you, JJ. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Martinez BJJ guys were a little, little down, but they picked their fighter right back up, and they're going to get him right back on the next card. Anthony Dill, he's ready to fight on the next card. He can't wait to go. And a lot of these guys are like that. They want to fight as often as they can. And, uh, you know, these guys are trying to make it to the next level, and that's what GPG is here for, for them to come, get fights, and try to help them with their careers as best we can. Another great card of professional fights at the Event Center. And we're going to go to uh, GPG 19, but before that, we're going to go to another MMA and Sports Extreme show, Training Academy, right now. Welcome to the Training Academy. It's JJ, not just a pretty face, but I'm also a fighter. What I'm going to show you today is Speed Bag 101. The Speed Bag helps you develop hand-eye coordination, the ability to develop your upper body cardio, just like if you're on a treadmill, but for your upper, for your upper arms. And it's a rhythm, and as I mentioned, it's hand-eye coordination. The swivel on a, on a speed bag is very similar to the diathrodial joint or the elbow joint. The elbow joint is the only joint in the body that both hinges and it rotates. Nothing else does that. If it does, you may, might need to see the orthopedic doctor. But basically the only joint that does that is the elbow. What you do with the speed bag is you want to get it right about eye level. I like a little bit higher. 
about eye level with the speed bag. You're going to use this part of your hand right here, and you're going to be using your ears and eyes and rhythm with your body. So it's going to sound like this. One, two, three. When you hear the three is when you hit it again. So it's one, two, three. And as you can see, I keep my elbows up, and I move like this. Now you can do your pattern of boxing. You can do a couple jabs and a right hand. Jab right. Now you want to use your eyes, as I'm not using right now, but you want to use your eyes and move around the bag. So you get this. And you can increase your speed. You always want to keep your hands where they're ready to go. I can adjust the speed of the bag by how fast I move my hand. You're not trying to kill the bag. This is not for power. It's for hand-eye coordination. You can also find a tap with your foot. Just like if you're boxing. This is Speed Bag 101. It's the Training Academy at the MMA and Sports Extreme Show. We're out of here. Batteries Plus bulbs keep stacks of batteries for cars, cell phones, watches, plus light bulbs for lamps, can lights, and appliances right on hand. Did I mention we also repair smartphones? Batteries Plus bulbs. Trust the plus. Visit Batteries Plus bulbs today. Welcome back to the MMA and Sports Extreme Show. We are now going to talk about GPG 19. That's March 28th at the Event Center in Pensacola, New Jersey. The doors open at 6. First fight's going to be at 8. Like I say, we'll sell you the whole seat, but you're only going to need the edge. Let's go down that card. Some of the matchups, James, that I'm really looking forward to, first of all, Kyle Dawkins versus Jordan Mitchell, the two big boys, the heavyweights. Now, that was supposed to happen at GPG 18. Yes, we had a slight medical issue, which delayed it until the 19th, GPG 19, but Kyle Dawkins is, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated fighters in the area. He hasn't been able to get fights for some reason, hasn't been able to get an opponent's name on the contract. He's a knockout punch, he's a knockout fighter, one punch knockout elbows, he likes to come and strike. And Jordan He's Mitchell, kind of a throwback to that, uh, you know, the tough man contest, the Dan Severn types. Yes, and his opponent, Jordan Mitchell, he's in really good shape. I mean, he, he may be a heavyweight, but he is, he's not fat. Circle gets oh. the square. <laughs> he's in shape, so this is going to be a good and fight. And that's the guy that drove all the way from Indiana. Yes, and he's... he drove, drove overnight from Indiana. I mean, these guys want fights. You get in a car and drive from Indiana to New Jersey overnight in a snowstorm, you want to fight. Absolutely. A couple of the other highlights I want to talk about. We have both Dameron Kirby and Peter Petty's back in the cage for us, James. They both are off and, of... and Johnson, too. We have uh, Lewis Johnson. Lewis Johnson. Right. Johnson. But Petty's and Kirby are both off of victories at GPG 18. They're both coming back for 19, both looking to, like I said, spur their career on, come and try to get another victory. Th this is a big weekend. I mean, you need to get to GPG 19 because not only is the fight on Saturday, but Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have Expo 9, which is up to 100 booths of mixed martial arts, martial arts, celebrities, and masters. So not only great fights, but all kinds of exciting things going on at the Event Center on Route 73. And there's information that if you go to 73eventcenter.com. Absolutely, and just to touch a couple more fights, we have a couple really good fan favorites. We have Tim Doling returning to the cage, and another fight you don't want to miss is Sydney the Gun Outlaw versus Elder El Psycho Ramos. Oh, a veteran of the GPG cage, Elder Ramos. Absolutely, that is one that you'd want to be on the edge of your seat for, as you say. You don't need the whole seat, just the edge. Yeah, MMA Melee just wrote, wrote an article on, uh, on Elder Ramos about how he escaped the cartel of Colombia. Uh, it's a pretty interesting article, so uh, we'll get a link of that up on the uh, uh, Global Proving Ground site. He's a great guy, and he's a good, really good fighter, too, so going to be a great, great event, GPG 19. Yeah, our matchmaker, Helen, has built a giant card, so uh, when we get back from commercial, 
We're going to talk a little bit more about what's going on at the event center, upcoming events, and, and wrap up this huge card for GPG 19, which is Fighters Against Bullying. We'll be right back. Batteries Plus bulbs keep stacks of batteries for cars, cell phones, watches, plus light bulbs for lamps, can lights, and appliances right on hand. Did I mention we also repair smartphones? Batteries Plus bulbs. Trust the plus. Visit Batteries Plus bulbs today. Let Arizona Designs grow your company. Our creative team can expand your company's image with your unique look. Arizona Designs will apply your logo to, to custom business cards, banners and signs, billboards, social media, and let's not forget our award-winning vehicle wraps. Market your company 24 hours a day with a look you will be proud of that earns you business. Call 1-800-600-1412 for a free marketing and branding consultation. Welcome back to the MMA and Sports Extreme Show. Well, we covered it, GPG 18, we, we promoted GPG 19, but that's not all. The GPG Event Center, located right on Route 73 in Pensacola, has some amazing events coming up. Not only GPG 19, where you can get your tickets at localmmatickets.com or globalprovingground.com, but we have the Pennsylvania Golden Gloves coming right to the Event Center in April. We have Chad's Witherspoon, professional boxing coming to the Event Center. We have Strike Zone, that's Muay Thai. It's very unique that we can have a, a venue like this where fans can come out and see kickboxing, MMA, boxing, uh, expos, and it, it just gets better. It's a fantastic venue, the event center and sports bar, James. There's not a bad seat in the house. Great food, great staff, great drinks. It really is an event. Wait a minute, you're forgetting out. something. Very important. You notice these beautiful hats that we're wearing? We're not doing this for us. We're doing this to protect you from the glare off our bald heads. But these hats are available at the brand new Global Proving Ground Pro Shop. We've got gear, we've got gloves, we've got hats, shirts, supplements, everything you need in a brand new pro shop right at the event center. So come out, watch the fights, get yourself a beanie so you can look handsome like Bob, and, uh, and have a good time. <laughs> hey, it's the MMA and Sports Extreme Show. You joined us inside our cage. We'll see you at the event center.